DC blocks for spectrum analyzers. Um, basically, we're just going to have a look at the insertion loss from these. Um, if you've got a spectrum analyzer, um, and on the input, such as that one there, it states, this one doesn't, but if it states um, 0 volt DC, then basically don't allow any DC on the input because um, it ain't going to last long and it's going to be an expensive repair. Uh, now this Sigland um, is okay, um, and also this Rosenswartz handheld, um, I mean this one states only 80 volts, um, so it's not a problem with that at all. Um, but I have got a couple of spectrum analyzers that do uh, state uh, 0 volt DC um, on the actual RF input. Now, uh, I've got a couple of uh, DC blocks here. I've got a Textronic one, and uh, this looks sort of semi homemade in a way. Um, and basically, all they are really is um, a high pass filter, uh, which will basically uh, prevent the flow of DC, um, providing a minimum impedance there for RS signals. Um, now, these type are what known as inner DC block, um, and I can show you that by uh, lifting the top off this one and there you go basically uh, so the capacitor is placed in series with the connector uh, in this case they're in type um, now the only disadvantage to using DC blocks um, is really that you need to either measure them before you use them and jot down some of the readings refer to the manufacturer's specification sheep, sheet and just keep in mind that there are insertion losses um, now the one shown here, um, I will put a better picture of that to show you. Is a 0 0.01 microfarad um, axle polyester. Um, it's an MKT1813, and it's 0 0.1 microfarad at 100 volt at 10% rating. Um, the Textronic one couldn't really find a lot of information on that. I could find references to it from other Spectrum Analyzer pages, but I couldn't actually find um, an, an actual data sheet for it. But but on those references that I found for it, um, it basically said, which I've got jotted down here, um, it's 0 0.5 to 2 gig, and it's 47 nanofarad at 50 volt. And obviously they're both 50 ohms impedance matched, so. Um, and what we're going to do is, I think we're going to have a, um, well obviously we're going to use the spectrum analyzer to measure the insertion losses, but also we're going to actually just test the capacitance. I've got a, an LCR test meter here, um, which is an ET4410. Um, so what we'll do, we first of all, we'll test the capacitance of the, uh, the two devices and see if they're in spec. Um, and then from there on, we'll then go on to the setting up the, spe uh, the spectrum analyzer using the uh, uh, tracking generator um, to test the insertion loss. Uh, we've set the LCR meter up so we've got the 0.1 microfarad uh, unfortunately I can get the pins inside it so it's not a problem and it is reading at um, uh, a level voltage of 1 volt um, one, kilo, 1 kilohertz 102.34 nanofarads um, if we up the frequency a little bit there we'll go up to the maximum um, which on this device is 100 I believe so 100 um, and we've dropped down to 100.95 nanofarads um, so what we'll do now we'll just test the um, Textronics uh, DC block and see what that comes out as ok I've got the Textronics now in circuit um, unfortunately BNC I can't exactly get straight into the pin so I've had to add some adapters which might add a bit of to or something to it but I'm not too worried about that and uh, as the specs that I found says it's 45.81 nanofarads at, uh, that's at 1 volt 1 kilohertz frequency um, let's take the frequency up a little bit we'll go up to the same test and we'll do 100 kilohertz and we're down to 44.04 at that point um, so that to me that's fine that's no problem at all it's within the specifications um, right, next thing we'll do is we'll set up the uh, spectrum analyzer, um, get the tracking gen sorted and choose a frequency that's uh, I think suitable for 
um, the equipment I use. I mean, I basically test radio ham equipment, so I'm only really interested in like uh, one meg up to about uh, 23 sims, which is I think is about 1.4 gig really. So we'll just do a test at that really. Right, let's set up this. Uh, so basically, we want to go into tracking generator. Turn him on. Um, now, what we need to do basically is um, normalize this. So basically, it's no night and just put a, a bridge across it. So effectively, we're removing anything from these leads here, really. Uh, so if we normalize that, uh, there you go, we're back up on zero. Now, what I will do, I'll move the, um, the reference level down um, so we can see it to about. Uh, uh, minus 30 there which the 0 dB now is just showing there really so um, now what we need to do is actually get one of these devices in line um, um, and do a test basically and uh, just see what the drop off is or the insertion loss rather um, in dB um, and we can take it from there uh, one of the things I forgot to do is set the frequency range to nice so at the moment it's on full span so uh, frequency so if we do a start frequency of um, we'll do 100 kilohertz and a stop frequency of 1.5 uh, gigahertz um, go back to you now we need to re normalize this um, so it stays within some kind of cal okay that's done okay so now let's drop in the um, the Textronic uh, DC block. Uh, the part number of this, by the way, zero one five dash zero two two one dash zero zero. Right. Let's drop that in line, and uh, we'll see what effect it has on that. Um, whether I can do this. Uh, well, it's oh, these are very tight. And I need to leave this one in. Um, let's just check it again. Why is that? Yeah, so that's fine. So let's just drop this in. So we plug that into there. And we plug that one into there. And okay, let's have a look at our trace. Well, that's pretty good if you ask me. Um, I mean, we could put some markers on, but. Um, Let's put some markers on. Um, I'll just set up a couple of markers and then I'll come back to you. Okay, um, basically, I've just set up four markers um, and the um, the drop is at the worst scenario um, 0.5 dB um, at uh, 1 gig, uh, 1.45 gig, I got 0.35. Um, I actually like that one, that's quite a good attenuator by look at attenuator, um, DC block, um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that, that covers the range where I need to go, I mean, if we go back to marker 1 and just drop it just down a little bit further, it's basically 0.7 losses there, um, which is really good, down at, uh, well, we'll drop it down to the 100 meg, why not? There you go, 100 megs is uh, 0 0.02 dB loss. So, um, so as a um, DC block, that would work quite well for the equipment I've done. And what I will do, I will do a cross comparison um, with this uh, FS3 spectrum analyzer. Um, and if there's any differences, I'll let you know. Right, let's try uh, the 0 0.1 microfarad um, and see what we get with that one. Okay, the DC block of 0.1 microfarads, we've dropped that in line now. Um, and you can see there is a difference. There is some um, in line losses on this. Um, I've left the frequency set to where they were before. Um, and uh, the uh, roughly one gig, I mean, we've got minus two dB there. And uh, to 1.45, which isn't the worst, there's uh, minus three dB. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just move these markers around a little bit. Um, and see where we got the peaks and troughs. Um, let's go marker two. I'd say that's probably there. Um, 
so that's looking quite good there so uh, let's move it up to there um, arc three uh, we've got sorry I'm putting these in the wrong place let's go back sorry yeah that needs to be roughly about there go back to mark two again it needs to be about there mm. and we'll put mark one right at the very end where the drop off starts basically so around about 500 meg it starts to drop off um, oh, let's have a quick look at mark four well, the worst scenario there, it's minus 4 dB, and if we drop it to there, which is one point, well, which is roughly the uh, calling frequency for uh, 23 SEMs, that's minus 3.45 dB. Um, so it's not the prettiest, really, this one. Um, as like I say, you've just got to take into account, if you're going to use these and make any measurements from them, that the there is a inline attenuation on them sort of thing so um, just make sure you take that into account um, as I've done the tests um, across the um, uh, the upper spectrum analyzer for the insertion losses and uh, that one seems to be okay to be honest so um, basically um, that's the principle of your DC block basically um, as it says in the title it blocks um, DC um, allows AC to flow um, giving um, a minimum impedance to the RF signals um, bought with insertion losses but it will save your equipment and although this, this equipment and this is a lot more tolerant um, some of the um, other equipment I've got um, even a very small DC bias can actually damage it so um, this is what I generally use I'll use one of these and a, a 3D or a 10dB attenuator in series with it um, and then that gives me uh, the protection I need obviously um, you can get DC blocks with built-in fuses as well um, but don't expect to find these cheap um, obviously you could make one of your own but um, on average uh, you're looking at anything from uh, well new um, I think uh, mini circuits do something for 50 pounds and then you start getting into the Agilent and all the rest of it and you're looking in the hundreds then uh, but you're looking at a range of um, 0 to 18 gig on that probably um, so yeah um, if, hope that helps you anyway and gives you some idea of um, what a DC block is um, it's nice the fact that I can open this one up and have a quick look inside um, it's as simple as that basically um, don't know what capacitors inside this one I ain't got a clue I can't find the uh, data sheet for it at all um, but I did I did some tests earlier using the uh, Rosen Swartz and um, it, the readings are exactly the same to be honest no difference whatsoever so um, no problem at all with the uh, the equipment hope that helped